Remember this mosque in downtown Calgary, home to young men radicalizing, holding secret study sessions, answering the call of extremist groups like ISIS. Men like Damien Claremont, one of the first to leave. His roommate, Wasim al Haj Yusuf, followed. This suicide bomber, Salman Ashrafi, killed dozens in Baghdad. Another one of your, of your brothers. Very kind guy. When you look at these faces and you describe these brothers of yours to me, it sounds very different than what we've heard. Yeah, um, definitely. Like I said, there's always a side of the media that would portray things other than to what the reality is. That's expected of the mainstream media. And remember this guy. This is a message to Canada. We are coming and we will destroy you. Farah Sheerden, featured in this ISIS video burning his passport. A dozen of them left, most of them are dead. Abdurrahman Ghanem was friends with most of them. He spent hours with the men in that study circle, even housed two of them in Egypt on their way to fight with ISIS. It felt like a family. It felt like a family. He says they left with pure intent, trying to help innocent women and children. They ended up uh, leaving an impact on the guys. They were uh, emotionally moved in a sense. Ghanem never made it to the battlefield, but for years has been questioned by CSIS about his ties to the Calgary cluster. Where he did end up was this jail in Algeria, detained and tortured for 13 months on terrorism charges. Ghanem believes it's all because of information CSIS shared with foreign authorities. They could have been uh, straight with me on what did they want from me. As for what prevented him from joining ISIS, Ghanem says it was his connection to his family that saved him. I used to feel the same way the guys felt. What ended up making a difference, I think it was my uh, attachment to my family. Ghanem has serious concerns about how security agencies do their work, and he isn't the only one. Yassine Mezian is only now ready to fight back. For years, he's been stewing in silence, wanting answers. And then when you keep thinking about the uh, chain of events that's been going on for the last four years, you just, uh, you just don't know why. The chain of events trace back to 2014. Right around the same time, CSIS ramped up their questioning of Muslim men in Calgary. Mezian says he wasn't friends with any of the men from that secret study group but security agencies believed he was withholding information. These guys, apparently, they used to attend the same worship place where I go on a, on a daily basis, and so they've talked to different people, and somebody has told them that I may be able to help them. Mezian invited security agents into his home. Since then, he says his life has been ripped apart. And you can imagine, you can appreciate the kind of fear they are creating in the heart of people. So, yeah. This is it. Ms. Yan says he's been harassed by security every time he travels. Even his passport was denied renewal until recently. And like Ghanem, believes it's because CSIS shared information with foreign states. I'm in Canada. What do you want from me? You don't want me to work? You don't want me to travel? You don't want me to have a life? What do you want from me? In a written response to CBC, CISA says it has robust procedures in place to ensure that information sharing with foreign partners does not contribute to the mistreatment of any individual. You don't start uh, shooting left and right to anybody that has a profile that you believe matches what you're after, you know, because a beer doesn't make somebody a good or a bad guy. Mezian is prepared to fight back for as long as it takes to ensure his children and other Muslims aren't wrongfully targeted. Devin Haru, CBC News, Calgary.